Now let's demo QQIs in action for the quality manager. This time, we will be creating a system performance sample to be processed at the beginning of every production run. Let's use super glue this time instead of scotch tape. First, we use solvent and a rag to remove any oil or dirt from the area where the QQI will be glued. Gel type super glue is less messy and more convenient to use. It's best to hold a QQI with masking tape to avoid super glue touching our fingers. After the QQI is applied, defect side down, we press it down and use a damp rag to remove the masking tape. Be gentle. If you push too hard on a rough surface, the QQI may be distorted and ruined. Wait about 15 seconds and then wipe the surface of the QQI with the wet rag to remove any excess glue. Our QQI is now firmly affixed to the part. Should we ever wish to remove it, however, solvent will do it. If carefully done, it can be reused. Tom, I've set up our multi-directional unit for our part. Would you run it for us using the continuous method? I'll be happy to. By affixing QQIs to each different shape part being produced, the inspector has a reliable setup sample for every production run. The test part assures overall system performance by checking one, proper bath application, two, correct bath concentration, three, proper magnetizing, four, that there is adequate black light and not too much white light, and five, that the part is being run by the continuous method. The indication on the QQI is great, and I see other natural defects as well. What would happen if we use a residual method? Let's try it. Wipe off the indication and reapply the bath. Now what do you see? I see a natural defect which came out due to the part being retentive and also a weak indication on the QQI. Poles in the part must be causing the QQI to show residually. What did we learn from Tom's experiment class? The coil shot on the multi-directional unit must have been last. We found that weak residual indications sometimes show on our non-retentive QQIs if our test parts end up with a longitudinal field in them. We found that it was necessary to use the continuous method with the multi-directional magnetizing and also when using QQIs. Very good, everyone. Any questions now about QQIs? I've heard that the Q... Thank you all for coming. QIs are a flux sharing device, so they will only have an indication when applied on an iron or steel part. Is this true? No, Peter. This is a common misunderstanding. QQIs respond to any magnetizing force applied to them, H on the hysteresis curve, even from a copper central conductor bar or in air as with a coil. They can't tell us about B, the flux density in the part. Thus, they will show an indication when processed in a magnetic field with no part present, just like a pie gauge. But when used on parts of high permeability, like iron or steel, the indication on the QQI is related to the field in the part. Can QQIs be used on induced current applications? 
Yes, as long as the continuous method is used. Remember, QQIs will not show residually with circular fields, such as the toroidal field developed in an induced current shot. Was that long torsion bar processed on a multi-directional machine using the yoke technique? Yes, Peter. In the past, such applications were limited to parts less than 40 inches long. But as machines have been improved, this technique may now be used on much longer parts. And with QQIs, we don't have to guess. We can verify the field even in the middle of that long part. That concludes our session on QQIs in action.